Something that every CPU shares in common is the fact that they get really hot when they're working. That's why we have these things, which are called heat sinks, to keep CPUs running cool rather than immediately cooking themselves. But how do you figure out what kind of heat sink you want? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Heat sinks, also known as coolers or heat sink fans, heat sink, fan, abbreviated HSF, come in a variety of shapes and sizes. All of these heat sinks in front of me are air coolers, while some others are water based. The purpose of every heat sink is to draw heat away from the CPU and disperse it with air. A CPU needs to be cooled because if it gets too hot, it'll fry itself, although modern CPUs are smart enough to slow themselves down or even shut off entirely before they get too hot. In air coolers like this one, heat sinks make contact against the CPU with a thermally conductive metal and heat pipes that draw heat up from the CPU and disperse it over a wide area while blowing it away with a fan. If you've ever wondered if heat pipes actually do anything, or are just marketing gimmicks, I can assure you that they do serve a purpose. They're hollow inside and contain water in a partial vacuum so that the water boils around the temperature of a warm CPU. Water boils into steam down here and travels up here where it recondenses into water and drips back down. What this does is move thermal energy very efficiently from down by the CPU up into the rest of the heatsink. But we don't put a heatsink down on a CPU without a little thermal paste. Thermal paste is a substance with a high thermal conductivity. It allows for better heat transfer between the heatsink and CPU by filling in all of the little microscopic air gaps that could hurt the heatsink's performance. There are a lot of different thermal pastes out there, but today the thermal pastes that come with aftermarket heatsinks are usually quite good. I have four different heat sinks here. These two little ones in the middle are what we call stock heat sinks because they were packaged free with our CPUs. Stock heat sinks are smaller and they can be a little noisier. They usually work just fine if you don't plan to overclock your CPU, though they generally make more noise than a bigger heat sink when your CPU is working hard. Let's take a quick look at the Intel stock heat sink. You can see it's mostly aluminum with a copper core and already has some thermal paste pre-applied to it. This heatsink gets away with being so small because the CPU that it comes with is very thermally efficient, so it doesn't need to disperse a lot of heat. By contrast, this stock AMD heatsink is a little beefier. It has some heat pipes and a larger copper base to compensate for the fact that our AMD CPU generates more heat. Lots of people assume that stock heatsinks are bad. That's not necessarily the case. They're just not usually good enough if you want to overclock your CPU, and you might not like how noisy they get under pressure. To solve these two problems, we have aftermarket heat sinks like these two big boys. These are aftermarket heat sinks, and they're the kind of heat sinks that you might buy to replace the stock ones. Right here, I have an extremely popular aftermarket heat sink, Cooler Master Hyper 212X. And here, I have a Noctua NHU12S. These heat sinks can cool CPUs better than the stock heat sinks, and they'll generally be quieter while they do it. At this point, you might be able to repeat back the two main reasons to replace a stock heatsink with a bigger one. One, it will generally be quieter, and two, if you want to overclock your CPU, aftermarket heatsinks will do a much better job of keeping your CPU cool. In turn, maintaining a cool CPU will ensure maximum performance and reliability. Whether you need a cheaper aftermarket heatsink or a more expensive one will mainly depend on how much you want to overclock and how hot your CPU runs. The best heatsinks are more expensive but are only needed if you're overclocking by a large amount, or if your PC is in a really hot location. So, let's say you've done your research and you decide to buy an aftermarket heatsink. There are two main things to keep in mind. First, the heatsink needs to be compatible with your motherboard, so check the compatibility to make sure it will fit with your particular motherboard's CPU socket. This Hyper 212X, for example, says it's compatible with CPU sockets 2011, 2011 3, 1366, and a lot more basically compatible with any modern CPU socket. Most coolers will be, but it's always good to double check. Second, your heatsink needs to fit in your case and not interfere with your RAM. Check the dimensions and make sure that everything is going to fit without causing any headaches. It's usually easiest to just do a Google search for your case name and the heatsink you want to use and quickly find out whether they're compatible. And that's about it. If you want some recommendations on heatsinks, check the links in the video description below. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. If you want to see more videos about PC hardware, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.